The scripture lesson today is taken from Isaiah, uh, chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. You're in the reading of God's word. What a strange feeling having the fourth Sunday in Advent as today. After all, there's still a whole week to go until Christmas. Shouldn't it be sooner? Right? Shouldn't it be like Tuesday or something? Now you might be saying to yourself, don't say that, I still have so much to do. Last week we talked about how we can get caught up in this season with all the things we have going on and have to get done because before Christmas comes, and we become overwhelmed by that. Well, this week, let's take a big deep breath and realize we still have some more time before we need to panic. And I know that it can be difficult to slow ourselves down in this season with so much to do. And I know that sometimes we find ourselves saying things like, did I forget something? What, what is it that I can't quite remember? Maybe you're like me when you try to think of a word and it won't come to you. It just drives you nuts until you figure it out. Uh, I laid in bed the other night for about half an hour trying to remember what uh, a unit of wood is called. Um, I came up with wood pile, and I thought, no, that's not right. And then I came up with cubit, and I thought, oh, well, that's a good one from the Bible. Could be cubit. No, that's not right. A ricket. No, ricket's definitely not right. And then finally it came to me. It's a cord, a cord of wood. And so it drove me nuts while I was trying to think of that. Well, we find that in our own lives this time as well. We find ourselves saying, Lord, what is it that you want from me? What is it that you want me to be doing? And so we find ourselves looking for a sign from God. And in this busy season, I have to ask you, are you still looking to see what it is that God might be calling you to do? In our scripture for today, we find someone that wasn't willing to ask God for a sign. Ahaz, the king of Judah, was told by Isaiah and by God himself, you need to ask God for a sign so that we know what to do. And Ahaz responded that he would not ask the Lord for a sign. He claimed that he would not put the Lord to the test. Now, if you're familiar with scripture, you know that we are not to put the Lord God to the test. Christ teaches us that when he's taken up to the top of the temple and told to jump and call upon the Lord to save him, he responds, I will, it is written to not test the Lord your God. But in this instance, Ahaz is being told directly by God, you need to ask me for a sign. You need to ask me for a sign so you can understand what it is that you need to do. And when he refuses, he does so not because he doesn't want to put God to the test. He refuses because he's afraid of what God might tell him. He's afraid that God might call him to lay down his place as the king of Judah. The result is this. Isaiah shares the good news that there will be a savior for the people and his name will be Emmanuel, God with us. But the bad news is, He's not going to come until these people are gone. And they're going to suffer the conquering of their kingdom and their people will be taken off to other lands. And only after all of that happens will God send the Savior. 
So good news for us, not so good news for them. See, Ahaz was willing to stay as someone that was just part of the background of the story as long as he didn't lose what he already had. Now, does that sound familiar in your own life? Have you found that you feel like a bystander in this world? That things are just happening around you or to you and you don't have any say in them? Well, if so, I must ask you, have you asked God what he wants from you? Have you listened and discerned to what it is that he might be calling you to do? Oh, I know. I don't have the time for that, Pastor. Have you seen how busy I am? Have you seen how much work I have to do, especially in this season? Pastor, I'm too old. Pastor, I'm too young. Pastor, I don't know how to speak to people. Pastor, I'm too broken and beat down to do that now. Pastor, I'm too much of a sinner to ask God what he wants from me. Well, I will remind you of this. Methuselah wasn't too old. David wasn't too young. Job was not too beat down and broken. Moses wasn't so bad of a speaker that he couldn't lead his people. And if God didn't use sinners and redeem them to his purpose, I would not be standing up here and talking to you this morning. And you may be thinking to yourself this as well. Can someone remind him that it's the fourth Sunday in Advent? He's supposed to be talking about love today, not what it is that God wants us to be doing. Well, I haven't lost it completely yet. I do remember that it's the fourth Sunday in Advent. And I do remember today we're supposed to talk about love. But I would argue that love is exactly what I am talking about. Okay, now he's completely lost it. How can what God wants us to be doing in our lives be love? Well, let me explain. You see, I believe the fact that God wants us to have purpose in our lives is indeed an act of love on his part. If you've ever found yourself in a place and a time in your life when you were questioning, why am I even here? Why do I feel so useless? Why can't I seem to do anything right then you know how it feels to be living without purpose. And that is not what God wants for us. He wants us to be living into the purpose that he has for us. And it is indeed an act of love that he cares so much for us that he wants to help direct us towards that purpose. The birth of Jesus, which we'll be celebrating next Sunday, is the beginning of that purpose-driven life for us. You see, John 3.16, the familiar verse, tells us this, that God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Not God liked the world. Not God thought the world was pretty neat. No, God so loved the world. Continuing on, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So are you struggling for that purpose in your life? Well, here is the place to start, and now is the time. See, our purpose is to believe in him. Our purpose is to praise him, and our purpose is to follow him. Our purpose is to spread his gospel and to bring others to him. That is the basis of our purpose and the start of how we show our love to God as well. As Wayne talked about in the uh, lighting of the, the candle today, uh, love is not a one-way street, right? Love is a two-way street. God loves us and shows us that by sending Jesus, and we love God, and we show him that by praising him and following Jesus. Now, that looks different in each one of our lives, does it not? Some of us stand up and preach. Some of us teach children. Some of us offer our labor by taking care of the church. Some of us offer our hearts by taking care of the people of God. Some of us offer our musical talents. And some of us do our best to do all of those things to the best of our ability. You see, each of us has a purpose and a way of showing God our love and thanks 
for the salvation that is offered through his son. I know at times it feels as if we're struggling to see the sign as to what God wants from us in our life. Well, I can tell you there is a sign that always is readily available for you to see. And you're looking at it right now, whether you realize it or not. And it's not me. But it is behind me. And it's up on that wall. And you see it every single Sunday. But did you ever stop and think about that that cross is a sign to you, to what you should be living towards in your life for your purpose? So if you're struggling to find out what it is that you need to be doing in your life and your purpose in your life, I ask you to look to the cross and I ask you to begin praying about it. Ask God where he wants to use you in your life. And if you struggle for the words of that prayer, I will remind you of the covenant, Wesleyan covenant prayer penned by John Wesley. And it reads this, I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you. Praised for you or criticized for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O oh wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. So know that God gives you that signal and that sign. And I believe that he will when you pray to him and ask. And he'll do so out of love for you. So let us pray that we are brave enough to follow what he calls us to be doing. My challenge for you this week is this. Ask God what his purpose for you is in this life. And then when you get your signal and your sign, do your best to live into it. Amen.